all praise to who? Allah is a rock. That's not a God. Allah is a rock. A damn stone. Don't give all praises to no damn concrete. What's wrong with you? You done lost consciousness? What you walk on? Bruh, ain't no Allah going on. Allah ain't going to save you, brother. You understand me? You a Muslim? Who told you to worship a rock? Give me do the give me Leviticus 626. My daddy. Who? My daddy. Your daddy didn't lie to you. Let's see what God said. How do we feel about biblical marriages? The real, the, the everything, okay, so we're going to get into some biblical marriages because what I feel don't mean anything, but what we're going to do, explain to you out of the Bible how did the marriage took place. You know what I want? 14. 7 and 14. 14. Tobit, chapter 7, verse 14. And called Edna his wife, and took paper, and did write an instrument of covenant. So, this is Tobias. He took a, um, he took, he took a, read it again. And called Edna his wife. He called Edna because he was going to get ready to, uh, he was getting married, read. And took paper and did write an instrument of covenant. So the point we want out of there is he first, he got, he got, he had his uh, son-in-law and his daughter and they took a, a, a piece of paper and they wrote the, read it again. And did write an instrument of covenant. So this is what we call today as marriage license. So it was instituted first in the Bible. That's where the land of America get it from. So it's a, it's a covenant between a wife and the woman and the male. It's a covenant between the two, which is called marriage papers. They call it today term is marriage papers. Back then it was called a covenant of what? Instrument of covenant. Instrument of the covenant, read. And sealed it. And did what? And sealed it. And he sealed it. Just like when you see it's called a notary today when they um, do it at the, at the courts. Read. Then they began to eat. After Ruguel called his wife Edna and said unto her, Sister, prepare another chamber. Prepare another chamber and bring her in thither. Hey, how you doing, my sister? So right now we're going over the marriage customs that was given to our ancestors throughout the Bible. Because whether you know it or not, we are a nation of Israel, which is which the Bible is given to. So Rock 42 and 7. Sirach, the book of Sirach, chapter 42 and verse 7. Deliver all things in number and weight, and put all in writing. And do what? And put all in writing. So anything, when you have an agreement with someone, it's, the God is telling us to put it in writing. So it can all, it could, that, that establish the matter. Right, that's what I'm saying. So one of my Bibles has like a marriage thing in the front, mm -hmm. and you Marriage thing. Right. What, what are you talking about? A marriage, like a certificate? A marriage certificate, or it got the, or it got like the order of how marriage supposed to be ran? Like, okay. Well, well, what we what we what we what we would adjust, what we would um suggest. suggest you to do is to make sure it's in line with the laws of the land, right. because we don't want to have something that's irrelevant or invalid to the customs of today you know what I mean so it had to be in order so I wouldn't even I would you know I mean it's good to have it but I would actually go down to the courts and do everything properly all right because the Bible instructs us to do all things decently and in order you understand so that's how you would go about that all right you got some you got some questions sister Jonah all right it's all good sister Jones excuse me we're giving the word of God right That's the real Bible. What Bible is that, sister? This is, uh, King James. That, that's what we reading out of the Queen James version. Marriage is something. It's sacred. Mm -hmm. One. Uh -huh. And then a man that find a wife is a good thing. Uh huh. Not clean to their own um, family or anything. Uh huh. Like Right? We read everything out of the Bible, sister. Yeah, that's what the scriptures say. So we, yeah, so that's what we going over. Because marriage is not taught in our community. So we going over there and we teaching it because it's not taught and it's not promoted. Okay? 
We need all that, sister. We covering every. Look, listen, Jones. Listen, we covered. We was covering that earlier. You came up in a portion where we were speaking about marriage. If you say you follow us and watch us, we cover everything. You understand what I'm saying? We cover everything: the gun violence, the gang violence, the drug uh, epidemic, all everything. We cover all that, sister. All right. We covered that already today, earlier. So trust me, sister, we on top of, we on our job as watchmen. I got a question for you, though. I got, who said that? You said the Bible says, come as you are? Yeah, it said, yes, it does. Where at? What scripture was it says that? Tell me. Because I've read the Bible and I've, I have not read that. No, Joan, we, that's not in there. But hold on, Joan, listen good. Give me Deuteronomy 20, 25. Joan, you got you to gotta come out of those pants and put on a dress, Joan. And that blonde hair is unclean in the eyesight of God, John. You understand that? You have to become clean unto God. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman. The who? The woman. John, that's you. You a woman. Shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. You are not supposed to wear pants, John. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Uh -huh. For all that do so. John, you are one that do so, read. Are an abomination. What did God call Joan? An abomination. God said you are an abomination, Joan. Read. Unto the Lord thy God. Unto who? Unto the Lord thy God. Unto the Lord thy God, Joan. You have to clean yourself up. That's what we out here to do. We out here to clean up the community. God said, which of you black men going to stand up for the evil that's going on in your communities? Which one of you men going to stand strong? Huh? God is looking for you. You right here, my brother. You gonna stand strong? Hey, my brother, but we gotta sober up too. In order to stand strong, God needs sober minded men. We can't stand strong while we're inebriated, my brother. You And you can't stay focused if you're inebriated. What's your name? Cat Daddy. Cat Daddy, brother, what's your real name, man? That's what we're talking about. We need grown men. My name is Nehemiah. Hey, Nehemiah, how you doing? I'm well. What's your name? All praise to who? Allah is a rock. That's not a God. Allah is a rock. A damn stone. Don't give all praises to no damn concrete. What's wrong with you? You done lost conscious? Bruh, ain't no Allah going on. Allah ain't going to save you, brother. You understand me? You a Muslim? Who told you to worship a rock? Give me do the give me Leviticus 626. Who? My daddy. Your daddy didn't lie to you. Let's see what God said. Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 1. Because you said all praise to Allah. Allah is a rock. It's written in every, it's written in the Muslims' uh, credo that you must go and make a hajj at least one time a year. I mean, at least once out of your lifetime. That hajj, you walk around a damn stone and you throw stones at it, you bow down to it. Read what God said. Read. Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 1. Come on. Ye shall make you no idol. You shall make you what? No idols. You shall make you no idols. Ayla is an idol. Habu is an idol. The sun, if you worship in that, that's an idol. Read. Nor a graven image. Uh -huh. Neither rear you up a standing right. image. Uh -huh. Neither right. shall you set up any image uh -huh. of stone. Of what? Of stone. Of what? Of stone. Allah is a stone. Bring it out. He said, don't worship no damn stone. What can a stone do for you, brother? You can a, that's it. Read. Neither shall you set up any image of stone in your land. And you don't set up no image of stone in your land to do what? To bow down unto it. To do what? To bow down unto it. What the Muslims do? Bow down unto it. That's what they do. They bow down to rocks, brother. They call it, they call it a, a, a hajj. You understand that? God said don't do that. So the Muslim faith and doctrine is not of, the God, of, not of God. It's of the devil. That's the doctrine of the devils. That is not your religion, brother. That's an Arab religion, bro. Come up out of that foolishness, brother. Bring it out. Hey, bro. We got some questions. I know you have some questions. What's going on? No, it's all good. Come on. Yeah. Right. Speak up a little bit, brother. <laughs> Born to this. Born to this. Yeah, look, bro. Right. The accusers. No. No, I think there's some about. You know, give me that account. Give me that account in John. 
where he talks about the woman who was adultery they was accusing us. Oh, oh, he talk about John 4. He talk about the Samaritan sister at the well. The book of John, chapter 4, verse 15. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast is not thy husband, and that sayest thou truly. All right, so what's the question? Right. She's just, she's basically, she fornic she basically fornicating. Sleeping with different men. No, no. She just had men she was sleeping with. And by, by law, if you sleep with a woman, you're supposed to marry him. Right, well, that's what the uh, soldier was going over early in Deuteronomy 2. I mean, what was that? Dude? Exodus 22. Yeah. No, they was not a husband, but they was supposed to. She was sleeping with him. She was okay. in the midst of whoredom. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she was a Samaritan. The Samaritans weren't keeping the laws of God. They was cast off. They didn't really think they had no heritage really with the uh, with God. You had another question that you asked earlier. What was the other question? About uh, about all Israel shall be saved, right? right? right, right, right. So let's get that real quick. Uh, Romans 11. The Romans 11 and verse 26, I believe. Because you think... Uh, give me your understanding on that. You say all Israel shall be saved. Right. Two thirds will be cut off and die. Okay. Right. Regenerate. Right. Come back. No, we don't go and get come for judgment. We just we die and we come back. We don't get judged yet. We haven't got judged yet. In the sense of eternal judgment. Right. No, no, no. It's a, the eternal judgment is when God come to judge the earth. He gonna rise up people and they gonna judge them. We haven't been judged yet, even in that sense. Like we haven't been judged per se. We've been judged as a nation, and you're seeing the judgment right now as us being in captivity. But like we have not got that final judgment when you read about the book of Revelation when the books is open. And they judging us. Mm. Uh huh. Uh huh. No, that, we don't. We don't get that. We don't get the. What I'm trying to get you to understand. We don't get the final judgment. Right. We don't. We ain't got that yet. Okay. Uh huh. Come forth, brother. What's your name? I'm listening. Go ahead. Okay. Right. Okay. Now, yeah, you see someone on the money, but I want—I understand what you're saying. That's that's somewhat correct. But we want—I wanted to deal with the first topic you was talking about, where all Israel shall be saved. Because first you said the two thirds shall be cut off. Hold Romans 11 and get Zechariah where it says two thirds shall be cut off and die. The book of Zechariah, chapter 13 and verse 8. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver as refined and will try them as gold is tried. So that's going into basically two-thirds of our people they'll hear this knowledge they'll hear this truth and they're gonna keep walking they're gonna act like they never heard it or they might repent for us for a small period of time and they go back into the world those are gonna be the two-thirds that god is making reference to but then he said one third is gonna keep my commandments and the faith of my son jesus christ and they're gonna live and they're gonna get the kingdom and god is gonna refine them as gold is refined meaning he's gonna make them pure or perfect in other words okay but two-thirds of the people 66 percent of the people are gonna die all right because uh, he gonna, the scripture said he's going to purify them. So he's going to make them perfect. Okay. Read. All right. Now, now give me that in Romans 11 and 26. The book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 26. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. 
So it said right there. So first it said two thirds gonna be cut off and die. Now it's saying, t huh? It sounds like a contradiction. So what happens a lot of times when we don't have the full understanding of the scripture, if you re just read it for face value, a lot of it sounds like contradiction. But you gotta find a precept that goes with what God is saying. So, right. And so, so we gonna get into that. Give me um hold that real quick so we can show you how you get understanding. The book of Psalms, chapter 111 and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. So it said a good understanding of the Bible, you have to be doing what? Keeping God's commandments. Okay, like the office, like the soldier was going over earlier, he was going over different commandments that we must keep in order to get the proper understanding or the proper breakdown of the Bible. Because we read Zechariah, now we're reading Romans. It sounds like a contradiction, right? So now, so but you have in order to get the understanding properly, first you gotta fear God and you gotta keep his commandments. Okay? That's what the Bible just said. We gotta keep God's commandments to get the understanding, correct? Did we just read that? What's your name? Who? Kenny. Kenny? Alright, Kenny. All right, now go to, I, uh, yeah, right there. So how we must read the Bible to get the understanding? Read that when you get it. The book of Isaiah, chapter 28 and verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Uh -huh. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Who shall he teach knowledge to? Who shall he teach the laws of God to? And who shall he make to understand the doctrine of the Bible? Read. Them that are weaned from the milk. Them that are weaned from the milk, meaning those that are keeping the commandments and have been keeping them for a good time. Read. And drawn from the breast, uh -huh. for precept must be upon precept, uh -huh. precept upon precept, uh -huh. line upon line, uh -huh. line upon line. So that's why we go through one book, and then we go to another book, and it gives you the proper understanding on what you thought might have been a contradiction. Because all the prophets and everybody in the Bible are saying the same thing. The prophets saying the same thing. All the apostles are saying the same thing. You understand? Even in the Gospels, from what, Matthew to John, they all giving their own account on Christ, which is all saying the same thing, right? So, with that, with, but, but we have to go through the precepts or different books to get the proper understanding, because do the Bible contradict itself? Do God contradict the, not at all. What is a nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you.